Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married at First Sight, Season 18, Episode 5, called A Beach of a Honeymoon. Before I get started with this review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it, and I thank you in advance. Okay, so let's get into this week's episode and let's start with talking about Carla and Juan they're at their honeymoon still and these two have a moment together where they're talking financial talk Juan tells Carla that she may have to travel alone and this is because he's involved with a startup company and it's a money pit and he can't spend money you know just wildly, he has to answer to investors. So she may need her own energy to pay for those green drinks she so enjoys. They go on a rowboat, and it's so cute because it capsized. The funny thing is, it capsized, but Carla didn't even get wet at all. Was that some type of voodoo that she might be into? It was just really weird. The boat capsized, and you're not wet. Oh, no. <laughs> but these two seem to be putting forth the effort in their relationship well at least in having fun they did have that one serious talk they did things like had a couple massage which is an activity that couples do uh, they're both good looking people and they're the type of people you would put them in a commercial or something about getting couples massage because their bodies look really healthy and fit and Juan is trying to be a good boy around his hot, sexy wife. Uh, they haven't been intimate, as we find out when she tells the girls. Um, so, uh, and she's looking sexy and she doesn't like a lot of clothes on. They get into a hot tub and they're in the hot tub. They're talking about housekeeping once they get back into shared living quarters for the first time. And they were talking about toilet paper and how they put it on the roll because every little thing matters when you're living with somebody and they might have a hang up. As far as a toilet paper roll, I'm told that if it's printed toilet paper, then the toilet paper should be facing up. And if it's a solid roll of toilet paper, like a solid color, white, yellow, whatever, then it is face or it's facing up. Um, or it's under, I should say. So, um, I don't know if you guys have heard that. I heard that once and I never forgot it, but of course you do whatever you want. No biggie. It's just toilet paper. Um, they talked about dirty dishes and Juan wanted to know if he left dishes in the sink from time to time, would she, you know, tell him about it, point it out to him? Carla says, I'm telling you now that would bother her. <laughs> it was such a cute little moment. Um, but that was it from them. I think that their relationship is cute right now. I, it might get, you know, a little rocky later, but they look good on the screen and, uh, so far so good at this point. Okay. So let's talk about Camille and Thomas. They go kayaking, kayaking, and I believe Camille is leading, but she likes a man to lead in real life. She, whatever she does at work, she makes all these decisions. But when she comes home, she wants the man to lead. Totally get that. I feel the same way. I think they look good together. They just look like a couple that would be together. And I think Camille looks better, her best physically in her casual clothes. She looked, um, she didn't look like a big girl in any way. She just looked fine to me anyway. Um, when they had their alone time, Thomas told Camille about his adoption. He found out that he was adopted in his thirties, um, by way of social media. That is interesting. That is interesting. Uh, he did confront his dad about it. And his dad says, I was going to tell you when you were 18, I guess the boys, cause they're twins, but he thought in telling them they would love him less. So he never did, but he said, I, I won't love you less. You're my dad. 
And that was really sweet to hear coming from him. His dad shortly then developed cancer, or they found out he had cancer, and he passed away. Uh, let's see. Camille, her parents separated when she was about 10. Off and on, they had a relationship, and they finally divorced when she was about 16 or 17. So they have that broken home, weird situation that they can bond over. You can tell that Thomas really likes Camille. He says, he told her that he, that she is kind and that you can see he's getting comfortable with her and she is, I don't know, she, uh, they're allowing each other to be themselves and be kind and you can see him being vulnerable with her. He had a dream that he always wanted to kiss someone in the rain and he did that and they they showed that she was telling the girls that's what he wanted and there was a sweet little moment where they kissed in the rain. I'm really liking their relationship. They are my favorite couple and they look so cute together. Um, one of the last scenes we see of them together, they were holding hands with the group and Thomas was skipping a little. You know, he's skipping because he's so happy. Thomas reminds me of the little boy who got his first girlfriend and he feels really good about it. And it shows. And I hope Camille is able to receive that because he seems like a sweet guy. You know, these guys, all of them are so weird. A lot of them are just weird and weird tendencies and thoughts and he just seems for right now anyway that he's a good guy please I'm holding on to the thought that he is and will remain a good guy okay let's go on to Ikechi and M.M. Ikechi told M.M. that he was kicked out of his home at 16 he believes his father and him are too much alike his father lived in Atlanta where his mom lived in Houston and I would want to hear his dad I know he's deceased but I would love to have heard his side of the story was it because you guys were too much alike hmm I don't know I don't really trust the caging he's still looking goofy in all those colored glasses when he looks so handsome without them um you know this man wearing these silly accessories is just so unattractive. Uh, in talking to each other, M.M. told Ikechi that he, she always had a hold on to her emotions. Her family wasn't a loving family where you get hugs and kisses and tell each other that you love them. She said that her dad told her right before he died that he loved, loved her. So that, you know, that made her feel good. But she's always, it's so really weird to see that she's a person who kept her emotions bottled up and felt that she had to because she's so happy and she's always showing that emotion. She shows that more than anybody with her happiness. E Ikechi met up with the guys and he told the fellas that M.M. is like the homie. Later, he told her the same thing and she was shocked that she, that she's the homie. He says, either you're the homie or the ops. She says, that's my option? She may be further shocked to know she just might be the beard. I, <laughs> I don't trust this man. I think he's in it for clout. He needs content, and that's what he's doing. Uh, I understand he has a lot of followers, and I'm sure they're following him over here, and he's just giving content. Uh, M.M. told the girls that she had not been intimate with him yet and that there's some, you know, pecks of kisses, a, you know, a peck here, a peck there. And I find that so interesting with all that touchy, touchy that they were doing in front of the group. You thought all that touchy, touchy would lead more than lead more than pecks. You know, there would be real kisses and real whatever. But when the camera's on, it's touchy, touchy. I don't know. Eminem, I mean Eminem, M.M. is about to get her feelings hurt, I think. Ugh. And if he is playing with her, 
Oh my God, no good should come to you. That is messed up. Okay, enough of them. Let's talk about Alan and Madison. Madison met up with David at the gym. He was telling her about his problems in his relationship, and Madison advised him to be more assertive. Later, she was talking to her own husband, and she explained how she talked to David that he's walking around in eggshells, and she advised him to be more assertive. Basically, she's telling that to Alan if he would just open his ears and receive that. Because he's not assertive. When she has to direct you, you can touch me here. Um, she wants him to be himself. And he is a little, you know, he's trying to be respectful of her. If she's not attracted to him in that way, that he doesn't want to push up on her. Uh, but he needs to listen to her more intentively because she's talking to him too about being more assertive so you know when you have to guide someone it's okay for a moment but if you don't start picking up what they're putting down it becomes a turn off and you can't keep telling a man how to romance you it just won't work now they had a conversation about style of dress Madison, Madison thinks that Alan's style of dress is eclectic and his personality seems to match that. He was wearing green sunglasses. Him and Akechi, where are you guys getting this goofy stuff? You know, and Alan was over explaining his style and, you know, stories in his past. Um, looking goofy, acting goofy, rambling, rambling. Madison had to address the rambling. Um, it's so interesting because if you watched Love is Blind, um, Monica had to tell Stephen about that rambling. And Stephen was a whole mess. You know that. Anyway, Madison, when you have that rambling, it's just she had to address that. And he rambles on like a nerdy dude. He rambled on, he rambled on so much that he's going to talk himself out of this marriage. It's just too much silly talk. He asked her if she was embarrassed of his style, and she pretty much said yes, and I would too. When you look goofy, there's nothing to be excited about unless it's Halloween. They had a group boat ride, and in during, uh, during the ride, they were sitting together talking to each other, and he gently had his hand on her back and the camera zoomed in to show that he was gently rubbing her back, which was sweet. I don't know if it turned into anything else. We'll have to see. They talked about having uncomfortable conversations, but it was necessary. Uh, Madison said having being overly communicative is uncomfy. So if we should read in between the lines there, if Alan keeps rambling on and talking on and on and getting nowhere with his stories, that makes her uncomfy, which makes him unattractive. So he needs to watch that. Good luck, Alan. Okay, let's talk about David and Michelle. Or is it David and Madison? Because David and Madison met up at the gym, as I said earlier. He told her things his wife didn't even know about him. Like his ex-girlfriend slash fiance. Um, they were once engaged. And that her, ta her name was tattooed on his body. So she Michelle doesn't even know this information. And Madison does. And I find it interesting that David and Madison were gym rats and they were at the gym together. So are we to believe that these two might have a thing going on as the show alludes to? If only Madison had blue eyes. <laughs> Later, David and Michelle met up. Now, this is just four days into the marriage and Michelle feels like she is going backwards. She knows she's moody and bratty but she's not able to shake it. After coming back from the gym, 
David spoke to um, uh, Madison and tried to ask her questions about her past. He finally told her about the tattoos and his ex fiance's uh, name on his body. And um, because he was serious about her at the time, he's willing to have them removed. He thinks it would be great to have a tattoo removal date. Huh. Let's test the waters and see how Michelle feels about that. Well, Michelle went into her confessional and she wants no parts of his tattoo removal. She straight out said, I want no parts. <laughs> she thinks it's a bad move to even put someone's name on your body in the first place. And quite honestly, I can't agree with her more. I hate, I've, I detest tattoos. Um, so, uh, I can understand her with that. I mean, honestly, if you have tattoos of somebody, I can't really get to know better because it's just that major of a turnoff for me. Anyway, David asked Michelle if she finds him physically attractive. David, don't ask a question you don't want the answer to because she kind of blew it off and made it seem like I can't answer that right now. It's, I'm not even thinking about you like that. I don't even want you around. It wasn't the right time to even ask her that question. When someone's not even feeling you at all and you're not the hottest looking thing in the room, maybe you should wait on that question. Michelle was annoyed by David's question. She doesn't even want to get to, she doesn't even want him to get to know her. That's what she said. What kind of marriage would that be? <laughs> David tried to keep the conversation light. He says he notices her laugh, um, that she has a distinctive laugh. He likes her laugh. He just couldn't get through to her. She had a wall up so tall, so thick, and he kept ramming his head into it. She's not giving him an in in any way. She's just disgusted, and she's disgusted with herself that maybe that she that she attracted this guy or someone felt like this guy was good enough for her. You know, I don't know. She's just, she's just not happy, not happy. It's usually always, there's normally one couple in the group in the season where they're just not, they just can't have it. Right. And David and Michelle are that couple, mainly Michelle. David took some time to be apart from her per her request. He said, uh, just send me a text when you want to talk. She wasn't about to send a text. She was basically screaming, leave me alone. <laughs> was, oh, the tension in that room. Poor David. He goes right up to bat again. Uh, he keeps trying. He went and he met with the guys to get some advice on his relationship. He still wants to move forward with the relationship. You know, and they got to talking with him and the guys. Um, later, Michelle and David met back up and she told him that she needs her space. She doesn't want him checking up on her so often. She feels smothered by him. She wants him to back off. She feels that he talks at her. That I didn't see. I didn't understand. I think... She's not seeing it clearly. I think she feels that way. She just feels his unwanted present. So when he presents, so when when you feel someone's unwanted presence, everything they do is magnified and maybe even misconstrued because you're so irritated with that person. And you're real you're trying I think she's trying to be diplomatic about it. But it is eating deeper into her soul, which is so, it's entertaining and sad at the same time to watch. She, he's becoming frustrated with her, uh, wanting her, her space that he gets up and leaves abruptly. He has a verbal eruption. He needed to decompress because he's. He can't get nowhere. He can't move forward. He thinks he's doing everything right. And she's just, you know, blocking him off. She's just not having it. She did 
let us know that she felt she knows that she's a control, a control freak and she can't control the situation. So she wants out on the low, low, I'm the same way. Uh, sometimes it feels like life or death when you're in that situation and you need to feel like you need to get out. And when it becomes a life and death moment, which is really a fight and, or flight moment, you just, that's what you want to do. That's that, that nervous energy. You just don't know what to do with. I think we just need to sit in that nervous, uncomfortable energy and get to the root on why it's even happening. Got to have patience. And I guess I'm still learning myself. David, poor thing, had to have a steak dinner all alone on his honeymoon. He slept on the couch. Michelle has even uh, driven David to drink coffee anyway. And he drank coffee for the first time in his life. And he didn't like it. And the taste, the reaction that he had with that coffee in his mouth for the first time is what Michelle is feeling about the overall relationship with him, which is sad if they could only see it that way. She's just disgusted. They had group time uh, on the honeymoon and they were in a shuttle bus headed to a boat ride. And on the shuttle bus, Carla said that her and Juan had not seen it, seen each other naked Carla was very free in her conversation with the group and she felt that she told the group that she thinks that a penis is a wand, a magical wand that has energy and you need to be aware of the energy that is going into your body. And they joke with Juan and jo uh, Juan said he's taking notes. <laughs> oh, and Madison had another lighthearted toast uh, with the group. She's always coming with the toast. She's a party girl. On this boat, David had another moment with Mich uh, with Michelle. Michelle was still, no still annoyed with him and didn't want to talk about their relationship. She wanted to keep everything light on this trip. Boy, this boy has really tried. He gets no luck with her. Michelle is so upset. She's she gets away from the group. She's crying. And one of the producers, Gwen, is trying to comfort her. Michelle thinks this whole process is pointless. She wants to quit. Gwen, the producer, asked, do you even remember why you wanted to get married? And Michelle can't even think of why she wants to get why she ever wanted to do it in the first place. She seems so unhappy. She's taking herself away from the group sometimes in some of the shots. She looks like a party pooper. She's standoffish with the group, alone by herself. I'm not sure. I'm sure everybody in the boat sees this because you're off. For once, you, for one thing, you're in a boat, which is a small, compact area. And you also got production staff on that boat. And they can see when things are up. Uh, like her needing to talk to a producer and uh, her back to the group. I'm sure they can feel the tension uh, that she is uh, exuding on this trip. We do see a clip from next week's episode. It looks like David and Michelle are doing an activity together. Let's see if things can get a little better between them. Wow. It was interesting. Uh, but that is it for now. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And I thank you in advance. But I got to go because I got living to do. Bye.